Hello, it's been a while. Um, I was sick for quite a while, so I'm back on top of the game, and here we are. We're going to go ahead and finish off the um, crafting, but in order to do that, we're going to have to spend a couple of episodes on it. It's not going to be something I can finish off in one episode. What we're going to do this episode is we're going to build the three-part grid we're going to be using, or the three-by-three three grid we're going to be using, and we're going to use this tile here, this, this image, to do so. So in order to do that, we're going to go back into the inventory here, Grind, 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 grind. Perfect. Now, in the inventory, we want to show that 3x3 three three grid if and only if we are in the craftable tab. So we're storing which tab we're in here in the current tab variable. And so in here and on GUI, we're going to split this into two different uh, chains. So after we do this part here, um, we are actually going to have this call a specific craftable GUI function. There we go. And then we'll just do it here. Public void on GUI craftable. Oh, I'm good to, glad the noise started just, just when I was getting started here. Uh, it would have been a shame to, uh, to give you guys any kind of quiet uh, episode. Let me just make sure my audio is on. Yay, I didn't accidentally turn it off. All right, so now on with the show here. So we actually have the uh, inventory skin variable, and that particular box is saved here in the inventory skin. But for the sake of uh, easy replacement uh, later, we're actually going to make a separate variable for it. Like that. And uh, we'll set that up here. Is it in the player or the main camera? I think it's in the player. Nope, main camera. There it is. So I've added in this grid tile variable. And down here in textures, we have that box. Later on, we'll probably replace it with something that's a little bit more suitable. Uh, you may have noticed that I created a second box that's just the exact same box but skinnier. And that's for labels. So this one's taller. And I was getting sick of it crushing down badly. All right, so. We now have this inventory skin, uh, sorry, this grid tile texture, and we're going to use it. We're going to put it off on the right. So, rect grid box equals new rect uh, screen dot width minus mm, 300, comma uh, 10, no, 50. And then the width and the height, we'll make that 128 and 128. And then we will draw it. So for int x equals 0, x is less than 2, x plus plus. For int y equals 0, y is less than 2, y plus plus. Rect texture box equals grid box texture box dot x plus equals texture box dot width times x texture box dot y plus equals texture box dot height times y and then we draw so we say GUI dot draw texture at texture box and the image we're using is grid tile and that should give us a 3x3 three three grid let's take a look craftables please oh it's a 2x2 two two grid that's not what I want. And also the tiles are too large. So let's go ahead and shrink that down so that instead of 128 by 128, let's make it mm, 80 by 80. There. Uh, and this should be less than 3 or less than or equal to 2, whichever you'd prefer. Craftable. There you go. So now we have a 3 by 3 grid. But we can't do anything. Uh, we want to be able to drag stuff onto that 3x3 three three grid, grid, but when we click on a craftable object, it selects it and spawns it into the world, rather than allowing us to drag it. Uh, and this is further complicated by the fact that these don't have numbers attached to them, so I don't know how many small housing units I've got and so on. What we're going to do is, uh, we're not going to think about the numbers today, but we are going to create the drag function. So. Uh, right now, we don't have a specific click action. And you can see here, we say, if mouse down and use this, we do this here. 
blah, 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 blah. What we actually want to do is uh, we want to say if click break. And the reason we are doing that is because um, uh, I'll, I'll tell you in a, in a second here. And we also have to pass it the um, A. So up here we say this. All right, so the reason that this has to, this click has to return either true or false is whether or not we have killed off the, um, the display. When we click on something in, uh, uh, in the normal mode, When we click on something here, it it uh, it selects it so that we can spawn it in by hitting space. So when we click on it, the the thing needs to go away, and that's what happens when we return true. But here, when we click on it, we want this to remain, and so when we click on it, we're going to return false, and this is going to remain intact. That means that click here has to determine which mode we're in. So. Um, uh, I've forgotten what the mode variable is here. Uh, current tab. There we are. And then here we have case craftable. So if we do this, then we return false. And to show you that, I'm going to do just that. Go into Craftable, hit the button. Nothing happens. Hit the button, stuff happens. So you can see that now Craftable has a different set of functions to it. And that means that we can put all sorts of functionality down here that didn't exist in the other modes. Uh, and so one of the things we're going to need to do is to keep track of which item we're dragging. And we're going to do that by this. Um, so we're not using the item but we are selecting it. But we also need to tell it that the craftable, uh, we, we've got a mouse down, so we're dragging. So we're not going to need to have dragging equals true here. But we don't have a variable called dragging, so we gotta go ahead and add one. There we go. And now, when we're in uh, update, do we have an update function yet? No, we don't have an update function yet. Well, before we do that, let's just make sure everything is working. So we find the camera, the main camera, and here is our, where's our inventory? Menu camera? There it is. So here you can see that we're not currently dragging anything. So let's go ahead and craftable, click, and you can see that now we're dragging something. Uh, we are, in fact, dragging component housing and now we're dragging component storage. So that part works, but it doesn't actually show us dragging it. It just kind of um, uh, sits where it was and doesn't have any functionality. Now here we have to decide on whether or not we want to have it so that uh, when we drag it, uh, it actually follows our mouse around. I mean, if you've gone and uh, done this in Minecraft, you know what I'm talking about. If you pick something up by clicking on it, it follows your mouse around, and then you drop it by clicking on it. That actually is not a great way to do it for us. It's not a hard thing to do. Uh, you just go into the update function and draw and, and, and make it so that it moves to wherever the mouse is. But um, uh, I might do it just to show you how to do it. But it's really not a very good way to do it here. And there are a couple of reasons for that. One is that unlike Minecraft, we only want to carry around one of these at a time. We don't want to say, uh, oh, we've got 30 small houses. We're going to drag 30 of them into the upper left-hand corner. Instead, what we want to do is we want to say we've got 30 small houses and we're putting a small house in the upper right-hand corner, or upper left-hand corner. Um, because this isn't us physically manipulating things in the world. This is the people up on the station taking an order. So. Uh, what we're going to do instead is when we are dragging something, we're going to draw an arrow to the mouse, and then when we click here, we're going to just mark what's in here. Um, I haven't decided whether to do that by spawning in the 3D model or by just having an arrow that constantly draws. We're going to decide that in the next episode. But for now, we're going to make it so that the arrow follows the mouse around. Now, I don't actually have an arrow. 
uh, sprite to, to use. And even if I did, I don't believe that Unity handles sprite rotations very well when you're doing them in the GUI. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to create a um, here in the game object menu we have a couple of 3D uh, or game world GUI objects like the GUI texture here. So if we change this from Unity watermark small to GUI arrow so we can't see this in the main camera but you can see it in the game camera see and the the biggest advantage that this has over doing it in the GUI menu is that we can rotate this uh, I guess I'll rotate it here oh I guess we can't I thought we could well, that's a pain in the ass okay we can't rotate it um, so that means that we can't do it the way I was going to do it, and instead we have to think of some other way to do the GUI arrow. And there are a couple of ways to do it that have been introduced in Unity recently, uh, and those are the various GUI line draw tools, but I can't remember how to access them. Um, so give me a second and I'll look it up. Hmm, I'm sure that Unity has introduced a better way to draw GUI lines in the past three years, but I can't find any references to it online. So our two basic options are to either use a line renderer or to use a texture and use the GUI rotation and scaling, which is really a munged together piece of crap. I could also use a direct GL references, um, but that would be uh, significantly stupid too. Um, it's kind of odd that I can't find any tutorials because I'm sure Unity hasn't left this to be this shitty for this long, especially given that they now have a 2D a whole 2D um, suite. You can now switch over into 2D development mode. So one would think drawing lines would be uh, would make sense. But since I can't find any of that stuff, the only real way to do it is to use a line renderer. Which isn't an option. Okay, so I'll create empty and then I'll add a line renderer to it. Brilliant. All right. So we're going to call this line renderer. And uh, we're going to go ahead and set this material to something besides awkward purple. Because it will just be awkward purple if we're not careful. So. Trying to find the material here. Is this. Where did I put our materials? You see how it's bright purple? That's because it doesn't have a material assigned to it. This material here, which should be somewhere... Where are you? Can you, can you pop yourself up over here for me? No, you can't? It must be this. Yeah, there it is. Well, that was annoying. Alright, line renderer. And we will make it so that it is this. That's not a material. This is a material. This material here. And now it is no longer going to be pink, uh, purple. As you can see, it's now kind of a striped, ugly color. Um, however, this is not a very good line color because it is lit by whatever light happens to be in the scene. So we want to create a new material. Well, we'll actually just duplicate this material here. And we will call it. We will call it. Okay, we will right click on it and select rename what the fuck there I don't know what the hell was going on but it would not let me rename it all right um, name this um, GUI line material and we'll change it from bump specular into uh, unlit texture transparent no, texture there we are and then, of course, we'll set that to be the line renderer material. And you should be able to see it pop up. See how much brighter that is? Obviously, the texture is one that we're going to get rid of. Uh, and we should probably make it unlit transparent, like so, because we're going to be using an actual texture that looks different from that um, and has, has some transparency attached to it. 
So we can actually, if you've never used a line renderer before, they're not that hard to get along with, but they are in world space rather than GUI space, which is the biggest problem with them. And I'll go ahead and show you how to use them. All right, so you can see how that works. You can just draw them. But there are a bunch of parameters that you can twist up. So for example, we could have it so that it ends at 0.2 width and begins at 0.5 width. Um, and we could also change the start color and the end color if we felt like we wanted to. But there's no real need for that. Uh, and we can also do this cast and receive shadows. I don't think we need to do those. All right. So this line render, set the size to zero so it just vanishes. And then we'll just save it as a prefab here in the generic assets directory. And then we'll delete it. And the reason we're doing that is because we'll need to call up a lot of these line renderers. Uh, so we're just going to make it public line renderer line renderer prefab and then public and then the line renderer prefab and line renderer active and now this isn't ideal for some well, you know what let's do it a different way let's make it a little bit more ideal so we're not constantly creating an well that seems like premature optimization we'll, we'll do it this way and we will actually create and delete line renderers whenever we need to um, so we'll go here into the menu camera, and there is our line renderer prefab slot. Let's just drop the line renderer into it. There we go. And that means that once we've started the drag, we'll have an active line renderer. So let's go ahead and create one. Uh, so down here in the click, we say if line renderer active equals null, line renderer active equals line renderer instantiate line renderer prefab um, and then we'll say line renderer uh, line renderer active dot um, points is that how it is uh, num Set vertex count. It's a really awkward. Uh, it's a really awkward thing. The line render is not is not as well uh, is not as well implemented as many of the other features. Um, Unity has some some sore spots when it comes to GUI stuff and lines. Uh, it's actually almost as easy just to use the geo rendering crap, but I'm not going to get into that. All right. So uh, for the very first vertex, we want to have oh my keyboard is malfunctioning. Great, set position, and then we'll set the position zero equal to the current mouse position. But we're going to need to translate from GUI coordinates into world coordinates. So let's create a function for that. So Hold on a second. Sorry about that. I don't know why world coordinates and GUI coordinates are so separated because you know they they now have this cool uh, thing called world or a space dot and then you can select self or world. They should just have space dot GUI and space dot screen. Well, whatever. We can do it manually, but we're going to want to do it with a function so we don't have to repeatedly do it over and over and over. So. Um, uh, mouse to world and our mouse position is going to be event current mouse position I think that that'll still hold if not we'll figure out some other way to do it there are a lot of a lot of ways to get the mouse position so um, uh, vector three world pause equals. Um, I guess we'll do it in the menu camera's space. I guess that'll work best. 
Oh, that would be this. The reason that it's a little bit easier to do using the menu camera is because the menu camera is orthographic, which means we don't have to turn it into a ray and then project forward X amount. We can just translate it straight into world coordinates and not worry about how far into the world it is because the perspective doesn't matter. It's just all orthographic. Uh, debug.log world pause, just so we can tell where it is. And then up here, mouse to world. And then we'll just go ahead and just for now, fill in the other two with something that moves it off to the side so that it's less easily like so. Just so we can see it uh, when we first click. Let's go ahead and see how that turns out. Mouse to world, not all code paths to return a value. Did I forget to return it? And we hit tab, go into the craftables. Now when we click here, hmm, did that not create? Well, it definitely created it. As you can see, we have a position, and the position looks right. Um, but we don't have a line renderer that's working. So where is our line renderer? There it is. And here you can see that one of the problems we're having is that the line renderer is not inside the world. Uh, inside the camera's view angle. Camera.world position in this case has created a world position that is so close to the camera that we can't actually see it. So we've got to move it away from the camera a small amount just so that it's inside of the camera's view uh, view range because it's too too far to the back right now. So we're going to do that in here by saying world pause plus equals transform dot forward divided by two. No, nope, it's still a little bit too close. And now that I'm seeing it, I can also tell that it's going to be um, uh, we our y-axis is inverted, which is pretty common. Uh, so when we get the current mouse position, we actually need to uh, subtract mouse.y equals screen.height minus mouse.y something they could fix by using the same uh, uh, space dot screen space dot GUI um, magic that I recommend. I don't know why they haven't done that. Alright, so we should be able to see that, but for some reason we can't see it. I mean, it's clearly there. Um, Oh, clear flags, depth only. There's the problem. No, wait, sorry, it's calling mask men menu. So it only shows things that are on the menu layer. I forgot about that. So we have to actually change our line renderer to be on the menu layer. No problem. There we go. And so now we do have a line renderer, but it's not following our mouse around. Well, let's go ahead and make it follow our mouse around, and from then on, we will go. Ahead, we'll stop the the episode there. So if dragging. And then we want the middle position to be uh, uh, halfway between the two, but not actually in the center. We want to create a little bit of a joint. Um, so, well, you know what, for now, let's just go ahead and set the vertex count equal to 2 into a very, very straight line. We will make it a little bit more graceful later on, um, but I have a feeling I'll want something like 10 verts rather than just 2 or 3. Alright, so now you can see that we have something that follows us around. Now, it is behind the GUI, and that's something we could fix if we really wanted to, um, but for now, I'll leave it like this. Um, and we will determine what to do about that later on. Uh, doing this kind of line drawing is really annoying, and what I'm kind of hoping is that once I upload this, someone will say, hey, you forgot about uh, Unity's new 
line dot draw you idiot function which uh, if you do happen to know of one let me know on the other hand if you're gonna let me know about something from 2010 uh, I already already know about it <laughs> all right thanks bye